So back to the data directory. <coughs> Going to index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Index 6 in the data directory will be what we call image directory entry debug. So this is going to be, as usual, an RVA that points at a different data structure. <clears throat> this data structure is called the image debug directory. And so we've got five things we care about in this header. There's a time date stamp, and this is what I'm going to say is the third time date stamp that we care about for you know, malware forensics purposes and things like that. So the time date stamp here, I said before, you've got the file header time date stamp. That changes whenever you recompile. You've got the export time date stamp. That changes whenever any of the export information changes. And the debug time date stamp should change whenever the debug information is changing. So sort of similar, you know, you may be just playing around with strings in your thing and recompiling it. And then, you know, the export information may not change. And if the export information doesn't change, the debug information may or may not change. It kind of depends. So the strings may be exported as debug information, in which case the time date stamp will change. But again, this is, uh, this is yet another time date stamp that can kind of indicate when this thing was potentially compiled or when the last time the debug information changed for this particular file. All right, the next field we care about beyond time date stamp is type. And for our purposes, type will basically always be two. So it can have many different values. But we're always going to see two because this code view type is what Microsoft uses in order to um, structure its debug information <coughs> for, for newer systems. All right. So type is that specific type, code view, and size of data is basically just going to say whatever this type is specifying, that's going to be a particular struct that's coming up next. And the size of data is going to say the size of that struct. Now we kind of have something that's looking a little bit like back in the section headers. We've got address of raw data and pointer to raw data. So this structure is basically going to tell us there's some other debugging structure available, but it's only actually telling us the file offsets to get that debugging structure. And that kind of makes sense because who's going to be dealing with this most of the time is a debugger, right? A debugger is going to say, okay, well, here's the file. And I'm going to go back to disk and I'm going to pull out the first structure for its debugging information. But that doesn't need to necessarily be mapped into memory and sitting around in memory, right? So address of raw data is like the other thing that was called raw data. It's a file offset. Offset into the file where you got this debug structure. And then pointer to raw, wait, address of raw data. Sorry. Uh, address of raw data is the RVA. And pointer to raw data is the file offset. So I just misdescribed that terribly. But they're both the same size because uh, we don't have any of that BSS type thing going on. We don't have any file padding going on. So they use a single size, but there is the virtual address. So I guess it is mapped into memory. I don't think it necessarily needs to be, but it is. It is mapped into memory. And so the address of raw data will tell you where it is in memory. And the pointer to raw data will tell, tell you where it is on file. All right, so now, um, based on the fact that it's a, so, you know, I don't expect you to memorize any of this. This is not, I don't believe, going to be quizzed on. But this is just giving you a notion that when it says the type is, um, when it says the type is code view, there's two different types of structures that it can be pointing at. It can be doing this code view info PDB. And it can be this code view info PDB 70. And these are basically just versions. It's more like 2.0 and 7.0. Oh, yeah, it says that right there 2.0 and 7.0. So, um, which of these it actually is, how you interpret this particular data structure that's pointed to by these fields, it's just saying, like, look, here in memory is going to be the next debug information. It's going to be of type code view. And then once you get there, you have to look at the first D word. And there's this header field, the CV header, or in this case, it's just CV signature. The CV header, the first thing is a CV signature. So really, it's just at the very beginning, first D word, there's CV signature. And that's these two things up here. These are the possible signatures. If the, the value is 01BN, you treat it like this thing down here. And if the value is SDSR, you treat it like this thing down here. So you just look at the first thing. It's like a magic value. It's just saying, interpret the rest of this structure as this or as this. 
And so what I'm going to show you is a breakdown of something where, like looking at the first D word of information right here, we see NB10. This is one of those little endian, big endian kind of things. So back here, there was 01BN. And put the other way, it's NB10. So little endian versus big endian. So when we dig into this structure, it's saying, you know, here's the first order thing, and it's telling us the address of the raw data, so that's in memory, and the pointer to raw data, that's on disk. And so, see this RVA2524, using PE view, using the RVA mode, uh, it says 2524. And so I look at the first D word of memory, and I check that signature. It's NB10, so I'm going to be interpreting it according to this struct right here. <coughs> and then from there, uh, you know, I don't expect you to, to know the rest of this. It's just this is how the structure would actually break down. There's a signature and then there's an age. And then at the very end, there's a PDB file name. This is what we actually care about. Out of all this, all we really care about is this PDB file name. And you'll see that right there, acledit.pdb. So a PDB file is a portable debugger, uh, debug file. And so this is on... Unlike Linux, so maybe on Linux you're used to your debug symbols. If you use the dash GDB, GGDB, your debug symbols get bundled into your executable and you're carrying them around with you. On Windows, for all modern uh, Windows systems, they compile their debug symbols off to a PDB file that's stored off to the side. And debuggers know how to read these PDB files and things like that, and they're, they're mostly undocumented even. And this kind of makes sense with, you know, a proprietary operating system. These PDB information is, you know, extremely helpful for reverse engineering the files and things like that. So they're pulling that off to a separate file. They'll give you the binary, but they won't give you the symbols. So the debuggers like WinDebug, behind the scenes, there are some symbols that Microsoft will give you. They'll give you some symbols, but they won't give you others. And so behind the scenes, WinDebug is parsing this data structure when it's debugging a file. It's looking up the name for a particular PDB file, and it'll go request from the Microsoft symbol server. It'll say, I need the PDBs for ACL edit, and, uh, and it'll pull down the things. That's not quite accurate for the internet audience. Don't yell at me. I know that's not how it works, but anyways. Uh, notionally, the point is, this can either be a relative path like it is right here, so it'll just say ACL edit.pdb, and then it can be assumed to be in the same directory. That'll be the first place you look. Or it can actually be an absolute path. So it'll give you the full path to like, this is where you should find the PDB. And it's that absolute path case that we care about for leaking information about malware authors development environment. So back to that uh, Hogland presentation in 2010. Here's some examples of, um, of PDB paths that were embedded into binaries for some well-known malware. So Ghost is a rat that's uh, most often associated with uh, Chinese attacks on Tibetan activists and things like that. So Ghost Rat has a kernel driver that gets uh, included along with it, and it's called re-SSDT. I won't tell you what it does, because that's rootkit class material. But you can see that when this file was actually compiled, this is the exact path where they were had their build environment. They had a program called Ghost, or a directory called Ghost, and then server. Server is the rat component that gets installed and it talks back to the client. Sys, i386, and so forth. And so Ghost was probably named because a malware analyst came along and said, oh, I see that they named it Ghost. We're going to call it Ghost as well. Aurora, this was the attack on uh, Google, sort of the APT attack on Google. And the reason the Google attack was called the Aurora attack is because this string was found in it. And this is from Stuxnet. And this was the Myrtus string and the Guava where it was like, oh, is it Myrtus? Is like Myrtle? Is like, you know... Esther from Ecclesiastes or whatever, some Old Testament stuff, and therefore it's the Israelis, or is this, you know, my RTUs because it's remote terminal units, and so you can read in whatever you want to that, or Murtis is a, you know, genus, and Guava is the subfamily, or whatever it is, so you can read in whatever you want to that, but the people who were making uh, the Stuxnet thing, they had uh, this embedded in one of their files, so they could leak in stuff about their environment, so if you see this file, it's got B colon Murtis, blah, blah, blah. And you've got this file, and it's got B colon Murtis, something else. You probably think it's the same developers working on the same tools. That's the level of, you know, attribution that this sort of malware attribution gets into. Oh, do we have same groups using same tools, using the same, uh, you know, 
chunks of code over and over, as has been found with the, the Stuxnet stuff. They've said, you know, between multiple different tools, there's like this one resource that's embedded that's reused amongst them and so forth. Anyways, as I said, we really only care about the debug information to the degree that we can pull out nice strings like this in order to, to get some leaked information. One of the quiz questions will be, you know, this thing is called round8q0.exe. What was it originally called when I compiled it? And you can kind of find that by based on looking at that PDB path that's in there, right? So you got to look at these address to pointer or the pointer to raw data. You got to go find that data in here. It's probably going to be right about there. Nope. All right. Well, let me do it once. Pointer to raw data. That's the file offset. 1088. I changed my thing. 1088. So it's above this. 1088. And go to bytes. It's not useful. Oh wait, no, that's not the string. Um, where's my string? It's not in there. Remember kids, pump your skill points into science and heavy weapons. Okay. Okay, so it's in there. I'm just messing up something about the offsetting, but here's the actual path where the, um, where the thing was originally compiled. All right, this is the TLS one, that's why. Uh, so this my this TLS example was originally called Z colon AV exempt life of binaries TLS baseline dot exe presumably rather than PDB right so uh, if you ever see some malware in the wild that's in Z colon AV exempt then you know that you know Zeno was the one who put it out there but 